Hello and welcome to our next video about temperature measurement. This time we are talking about resistance thermometers. Yeah. Resistance thermometers. Resistance thermometers. How they are working? Yeah. We said we do have some sensor. Yeah. This time, this sensor is some resistor, yeah, which is changing its resistance by with the temperature. Okay? And this I'm going to connect. I measure the resistance value. And when I know which material I do have, yeah, and I know which resistance I should have at a certain temperature, I can derive from this the temperature. Yeah. In electrotechnic, in electrotechnic, you have for sure heard that the the resistance of a standard uh, of a standard uh, metal yeah, is derived from the temperature. There, we used some small or Linearization, we said it's R R20 multiplied by 1 plus alpha multiplied by delta theta. Okay. What was this? Did what this was the resistance at 20 degrees Celsius. This was given by the material and the form of the material. Yeah. This here was the was the so-called so it's some temperature coefficient I would say. Yeah. Temperature coefficient. Okay. And this is the temperature change. Change from 20 degrees Celsius. This was a linear, and this is the resistance at a certain temperature. Resistance at temperature theta. Okay. This was the formula we used in the electrotechnic. We said, the okay, yeah, for guessing our winding temperatures and why winding resistors and so on, that was good enough. Now we really want to measure. Now we really need to have more accuracy. Okay. So there are materials out there which tend to be pretty linear. This is the linear approximation. Yeah. Pretty linear. Please remember we talked about this at our static behavior of measurement systems. Yeah. We linearize curves. For measurement reason, this linearizing here is never enough, I would say. Yeah? Only in a small window of temperature. There are materials outside which are pretty linear, and there are materials outside which are not linear at all. Yeah? There's one linear, or there's one very linear measurement system, yeah? and it's very commonly used. This is if this thing here is made out of platin, PT, okay, out of platin, it is very commonly used, okay. But for temperature reasons or for measurements reasons, for platin, there is not even not even a linear equation. There's a cubic ah. Uh, Quadratic, sorry, not cubic, also not cubic, but quadratic, quadratic equation, yeah, because it is enough to calculate it like this, yeah, R delta, yeah, is R zero, that's the resistance at zero degree Celsius, and then one plus R multiplied by theta, plus, oops, <laughs> plus B multiplied by theta squared. Okay? And for platin, this 
a is 3 dot, no, you must not know this, it's just for being complete, then I'm going to 3 by Kelvin, yeah, and b equals minus 5, 7, 7, 5, multiplied, then I'm going to 7 by Kelvin squared. Okay. These are the coefficients. This is for platinum good enough in a wide, wide area, in a wide, wide area. Usually we do use so-called PT100 measurement system. What is a PT100? This means this is this R0 here. It has at zero degree Celsius, it does have a resistance of 100 ohms okay there are also pt500 which would have pt500 uh, ohms there are pt1000s which would have 1000 ohms this is the most common one pt100 okay pt100 is the most common one material for these resistance thermometers for dedicated resistance thermometers okay there was also nickel. There was also uh, nickel materials. I just write it. So there was also NE hundred yeah, and 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 five hundred and thousand. Yeah. This was also, but I put around here brackets. They are not used anymore because platinum is simply this is the resistance thermometer. This is maybe maybe somewhere in here we would need a sixth up to the sixth potent, okay. Especially under zero degree Celsius, there is quite some some off. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure if you remember, but we used this. We used such type of temperature measurement before. There is an Arduino video. Where we use this little thing here. This is, was nothing more than this sensor here. However, this is, was not a platinum thing. This was not a platinum thing. I'm not sure if you remember, we used a really strange or very complicated formula, which means this is, was really not linear. This is really not linear. This was a so called NTC. Yeah, what is an NTC? Ne negative temperature coefficient, this is called. Uh, there are resistors out there, measurement resistors, which do contain uh, ceramics. Then there are semiconductors. This is a semiconductor one. Yeah, uh, metal oxides, ceramic, and so on. The big benefit of these things is that the change of resistance by Kelvin is much, much higher. Yeah? But the disadvantage is that is very not linear okay so there are so called hot conductors ntc's negative temperature co coefficient highest letter in, in german and the kalt letter yeah ptc's yeah where the conductivity if they are cold is lower uh, higher of course the resistance is lower yeah ptc positive temperature coefficient these are you can see it's positive, positive temperature coefficient. Platinum has positive temperature coefficient. These things here, they are available with negative and positive temperature coefficients. A lot of things here, they do really, uh, doesn't really fit to, to, to measurement purposes. These things here, they're usually not only influenced by, by the temperature, but also by humidity. They have a certain memory yeah so this means whatever is the resistance is also influenced by the history before so this makes it a little bit complicated to use for exact measurements those things however do have since they're mostly semiconductors they do have a great benefit and this benefit is that i can plant them directly on my chip yeah inside the cpu inside the memory 
there's a small part which is measuring which is measuring the temperature directly on the chip yeah? and not somewhere else. This is the big advantage of these things here. And then, okay, then they are not accurate, then they are 3, 4 Kelvin off, but if this is enough, yeah, okay. And usually the linearization is also not done by calculating around. This is just a lookup table where it's written this resistance means this temperature, this resistance means this temperature, this resistance means this temperature, and then it just has to look up in this lookup table what resistor is closest to mine, this is the temperature. Okay. Also going very fast. So this is this is such an example NTC. What is then a totally different story is a real measurement device. This looks like this. Okay. Here you can see this thing here is this thing here is a PT100. Can we read this? Uh, it's a PT100 measurement and there is also written uh, class B, class B and three wire connection. So it's PT100, which means we do have 100 ohms at zero degrees Celsius. Yeah? And, and class B, what does class B mean? Class B, there are several classes. Okay, there are several classes uh, of, of temperature, temperature measurement, PT100, there's class AA. What means we do have 0 to 0.1 Kelvin. We are 0 to 0.1 Kelvin up or off plus 0 0.0017. Martin, multiplied by the temperature. Then there is class A. This means we are 0 0.15 Kelvin off yeah, plus 0 0.002 multiplied by the temperature. And class B, what this one here is, yeah, this one here is, this means we are uh, 0 0.3 Kelvin off yeah, plus 0 0.005 multiplied by the temperature. Okay, so if we do have 10 degree, then we are 0 0.05 Kelvin more off. Okay? And class C would also not be defined. Then we have 0 0.6 Kelvin plus 0 0.01. Okay, these are the classes of the PT100. So I use blue. And this is class B thing. I would suggest, let's open it. Let's look inside. Let's look inside. Here you see, there is a seal inside so that no water can get in. This is really a measurement device. This is metal. Yeah. This is, it's something else than this one. Have a look inside. Three connections. Okay. Three connections. What's that? Why three? Why three connections? Here, I'm not sure if you could have re read it. There was also written three wire connection. So this means this is the connection. This is where I send my measurement current. Yeah. To have the measurement current really really uh, not influencing my my behavior i have here a third connection this is the sense line and here i connect my voltmeter to measure the the voltage this means this line resistance here we would have here a line resistance. Does not really influence my measurement. Okay. Three wire connection. That's this. There's this big tube and so on. Uh, that's not really the sensor. 
that's not really the sensor. We can even open it a little bit more to have a further look inside. <laughs> okay, pull it out. See already? No, it's still some turns of the screw. Gently pull it out now. You see, this down here, down here, there is the sensor. This is the connection, and this here is just some protective tube. Okay, the whole protective tube. This means I can screw this in, I can even exchange the sensor without opening any pipe or wherever this is stuck in. Okay, so this is the sensor. Yeah. Here we do have the connections. We can measure, we can measure uh, the resistance. Let's measure the resistance. Here, between the sense line, between the sense line and the standard line, I will put this over here. Clock, clock. Yeah. So. The two red ones are the sense and the and the supply line. It does not really matter. It does not really matter which is which because they are ending anyway, both at this position. So if I measure here, I should get zero, yeah, almost zero ohms. Yeah. Okay, so this means they are two connected. So and between here and here, I should measure somewhat around 100 ohms. It's 100. Let's call it 112, okay. 111 now, 111, 111 ohms, I measure 111 ohms. And from this, yeah, I can calculate the temperature. Okay. And this is what all those, all those things are doing. If we say we want to measure the temperature and we do have a PT100 connected, yeah, then all those PLCs and whatever, yeah, they're doing it exactly that way. And they have this formula they do have already included in their hardware somewhere. Yeah. Or maybe it's software, cannot be told nowadays, but this is included. This formula is usually included in the measurement device and then the real data, the real degree Celsius is popping up somewhere. Yeah. So this is how the things are looking. Yeah. Can be used class AA, yeah, class AA, they can be used between minus 50 and 250 degrees Celsius. Yeah, there are some out there. Class C, they are even specified from minus two, uh, minus 196 degrees Celsius to plus 600. So a very, 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 very broad range. And this class B is also from minus 196 to 600 degrees Celsius. Yeah. Maximum. Yeah. I will try to mount this again. Yeah. Try to mount it again. Should not be a big issue. You only have to hit the holes correct. Be gentle because it's aluminium. Yeah. Don't over tighten screws in aluminium. Aluminium will bend. But that's not only true for sensors, that's also true for motor blocks, for instance. Yeah. This is why somebody is thinking about is thinking about the maximum maximum uh, torque.
Yeah, anyway, I mean, you do not have to look me screw this together. Uh, I mean, for the resistance thermometers, that's it. Okay, that's it. This is how resistance thermometers are working. Remember, PT100 is the most used. This NTC and PTC stuff, this is used usually on chips and so on. Uh, that's it. Next time we are talking about something else. Next time we are talking about the so-called thermo elements. Yeah? There is an effect, Seebeck effect. I will explain what this means, this Seebeck effect, and how this is used for this time. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for listening and goodbye.